What's up, everybody? It's Greg Birch with Delta Financial, and this is the Be the Difference podcast. The podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur. And we bring on guest speakers today. I have the honor and pleasure of welcoming Miss Jocelyn Chong. Jocelyn, how are you? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for that incredible introduction. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to sh come on and share your story and share some wisdom, your experiences, and hopefully pour into the audience today. So I appreciate you being on. Absolutely. Look forward to so, that. Yeah, definitely. So um, I like the energy already, Jocelyn. I'm, 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 I'm digging this vibe that we got going on right now. So, <laughs> We're going to um, have fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. 100%. So, uh, so for, for the audience, for those of you that don't know who Jocelyn is, so Jocelyn Chong is an internationally recognized networking specialist, four-time number one international best-selling author, global speaker, certified coach, and podcast host. Jocelyn empowers female entrepreneurs and business professionals to master the art of intentional networking to accelerate their business growth, power, and possibility and break through that glass ceiling, the dreaded glass ceiling. She has over 20 years of it experience leading multiple eight-figure businesses and building high-performance sales teams in the banking and finance sector with 15 years in leadership, project delivery, and governance expertise. She has been featured in many publications and is regarded as a thought leader in the banking industry. Her point of difference is her expertise in international networking, leadership, sales, strategic communications, and business advisory. When you engage Jocelyn, you access over 36,000 plus hours of experience, knowledge, and wisdom in leadership and management, sales, and lead generation strategies, the extensive banking and finance experience. Jocelyn also infused spirituality in business intuitively, and her followers are growing daily. She is a heart-centered entrepreneur. I love that. A compassionate and resourceful person who thrives on human transformation and loves to help others to create a life by design. She has been featured in Channel 9, Thrive Global, Digital Journey, Fox, Ask.com, The Times, and Finance News World. When she's not empowering her clients, you can find her working on her own self-development, enjoying nature, and planning her next getaway. Jocelyn, Jocelyn, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Very, very well claimed. I love it. That is me. That's me that you have just read. Yes, that is you. It's always weird having your bio read every once in a while. You're like, oh, that's me. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So you yeah. I mean, you, you sound like a a productive and busy woman. How do you how do you handle all of that? That's the keyword, productive. Yeah. So it's about being able to decide and focus your energy at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And that's key to ensuring that we produce results throughout the day, throughout the months, throughout the years, and zoning in what you enjoy most. Because mm -hmm. if you do things that you enjoy most, it gets to be very fun and you're in your playground. Yeah. But if you do things that you don't enjoy, then yeah, you know what I mean. You, yeah, fun. you get burnt down. You get, you, get, you, you get that fatigue, you have burnout, right? Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. And, and, yeah. You, and you can also, like, honestly, it, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of A type personalities, they can, they can do something that they don't enjoy and they can do the grind. Right. And they can be like, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to do the job, I'm going to do the work and not enjoy it. And if they, if they never gain an appreciation for it, a passion for it, it's like, it's like putting gas in a car and just pressing on the gas pedal as hard as you can everywhere you go eventually that car is going to explode if you don't do some maintenance some scheduled maintenance you rotate the tires you change the oil the spark plugs all, all that your car is going to just die eventually and you will too like you're going to you're going to burn out and you're going to shut down so 100 percent gotta love what you do yeah that's true i always tell my clients you know what you don't want to wait for a death divorce or disease to hold you back and awaken you to the fact that you need rest. You need to go away and recharge. Like you said in the analogy that you just pointed out, you know, a car needs to be serviced every every year at a minimum. You need engine oil, you need to make sure that your tires are tight, your 
you know, gearbox and everything else that's working well. And that is us as human beings. We are the real human being machine that we need to care. So it's important that even if you are in your playground, you still need time to play, time to rest, time to nourish your body with good food, you know, drink good quality, you know, water. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't drink enough water. Actually, that's so basic, but you know, hydrating so your body right. is so important. So right. I drink, I drink about a gallon and a half a day. I'm also a big dude. I'm six seven. If you saw me, you'd be like, wow, you're a massive dude. I'm six seven and about right now I'm two thirty-five. So okay. So I'm I'm a big guy. But yeah, I drink <laughs> about a gallon and a half of water a day. And it's so you're so right. Like you have to it is important. It's it's mind, body, spirit, right? Or uh uh yeah, yeah, mind like the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. And so it's all three of those. It's not just any one of those three. If you only focus on one, the other two will suffer, which inevitably will make the first suffer. Like if you're only focused on your physical side and you don't focus on your mental, your spiritual side, those will suffer so much that like eventually it will affect your physical side. It'll affect your your psyche and your ability to focus on improving your physical fitness or whatever it is that you're doing when it comes to physical. So no, you're absolutely right. You have to, it's, it's a balance or I, I like to say a harmony. It's a harmony yes. between all three because it's going to ebb and flow. Sometimes you'll pay more attention to your physical than you were your mental or your, or your, or your, uh, um, your spiritual, but sometimes you're going to focus more on the spiritual and your mental and vice versa. So, um, Absolutely. I like the, the ebb and flow of it. Yeah. Very so. important. Very important. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So, um, this is so that the, the, the audience that we're talking to is, is primarily going to be insurance 1099 sales agents. Um, and they're, and they're looking to either become better in sales right? Or mm -hmm. they're looking to kind of take that leap. Maybe they're just started insurance and they're still holding on to that nine to five and they're scared and they're like, oh, I don't know, like if this is for me, but I see people making money and I got my license and, and all these questions are trying to come up with the perfect solution before they finally jump. So, so let's talk about building great sales teams or, or building great sales individuals. You know, uh, I think yep. digging into that is a, and, and the mindset behind it, um, the sales aspect, um, different strategies that, that, that you would employ in order to help sales. And this is kind of like the financial sector anyways, not in the banking side, but on the insurance side. So with your yes. expertise, you know, let's start from the beginning. So at the start of my banking career, I used to sell car insurance, oh, okay. mortgage insurance, yeah. and um, we had got home contents insurance. And so my insurance expertise at that point in time is to believe that number one, do you have that insurance yourself? Because if you know that you have got that insurance, it's easier to sell to someone else. That's true. Yeah. Because if you never buy insurance for yourself and you want to sell it to someone else, it ain't not going to work. It's not yet. And so <laughs> Absolutely. it's important that you, you are protected. And once you endorse that for yourself, you know what? When you have a conversation with someone, you have the conviction to mm. make the sale. It's easy. And so after that, I progressed to, you know, income protection insurance. I don't know whether you have them in the US, but we have them in Australia. Mm. And then trauma insurance, death insurance, total permanent disability insurance, and a whole host of other insurance in the banking sector. So that is my background in terms of insurance. And I always believe that if you believe in the product and you know the benefits, so... Think about what is in for the clients when you want to talk about product. Not about you. They don't care about who you are, what you stand for. But you got to have that credibility that you believe in the product and that when you speak to your clients, talk to them about the benefits that they will gain as a result of purchasing that product. Mm. And when you've got that in mind, you're serving them. So Absolutely. the first question that you always want to ask yourself is, what is in for them? And we always tell my sales team, what's in for the client? Because that's what they want to walk in. That's what attracted them to you. And so if you believe in that, you will add significant value to them. So that's the first thing. The second thing around sales is that, you know what? When you build your calendar, right? A lot of people live their life by default rather than by design. 
But if you think about your calendar for the week and you want to support as many clients as you can through insurance, what portion of your calendar are front-facing to serve someone else, to have a conversation with your clients? Yeah. I would highly recommend about 70% of your calendar should be scheduled to meet new people and to share with them the benefits of insurance. Yeah. And in terms of sales, you know, what else can you add value to them? It's not just the product, but the service, the delivery. Are you warm? Are you transactional or are you someone who really care for your clients? Because they will buy the product, but you can make yourself likable for them to buy the product from you by being kind, by speaking well, by being professional, small, stay engaging, answer questions. When they make an appointment, make sure you arrive five minutes before the appointment and have a conversation with them and listen. Listen actively is so powerful for self sales individual. Yes. Because a lot of people have got all this information that I want to share with my clients, but they're not listening and asking the clients what do they need? Mm-hmm. Why they're here. And sometimes they might spend, you know, 70% talking about something else, but deep down, they know that they want to protect their family and they want to buy insurance to do so. Mm -hmm. And so if you understand all their front level concerns they may have and take notes, take active notes, ask questions, go deeper, help them understand the benefits. And once they sign up the policy with you, Follow through, send them a thank you note. Ask them for, you know, a referral. Let them know that you can help more of their family or friends. So I think there's a whole bunch of, you know, um, tips there that I've pointed. No, absolutely. Back to, yeah, you know, how you run your day, your calendar, mm-hmm. and then, you know, being interested in your own product and talk about it and listen to your clients. Know your clients really well and ask a lot of questions to engage them and a lot of people want to talk about them but so, you listen to your clients you know it makes such a big difference i i love i love it what you're what you're breaking down is the simple basics of sales and and anytime i talk to an agent that's that's having issues starting and we talk about everything that there's going on through their head and what they're looking to do and you know and we go through coaching almost always they're trying to outdo the basics of sales because either they don't think it's going to work for them. They don't believe that strategy they apply will work for them or they think there's got to be some other way or they want to outthink the situation, recreate the wheel. And, and it's good hearing it from another person, from somebody that you know, you're it's internationally recognized like speaker and coach is the basics are the basics are the basics in in Australia and in the United States, no matter where you go, it's sales is human and it's a basic human function and everyone does it, right? It's just influence. And, um, you know, and I like that you're also bringing in other concepts like master, like schedule your calendar out, control your schedule. The simple thing of controlling your schedule. So you, you're living, I love that how you say, live your life by design, not by default. That is great. That is so great. And, and that's what you're doing is you're, you use that calendar. I like to say, this is the route that you're going to take. So you have a goal. Okay. You have a sales goal. I want to, I want to make X amount of money in sales and do this at the other. Boom. That's, that's your goal. But it's like, okay, so how good are you at sales now? You could be starting at zero. You could be, Hey, I'm currently, here's my metrics, my numbers, my performance, my stats. Yeah. That's where I'm currently at. And then the calendar is one piece of the route to get where you want to go. So like you have your current location on your GPS, you have your destination, then you have the route you have to take. And when you think about it in real basic terms, I try to explain to agents like that, but that route that you take is like your calendar, it's your scheduled activities, it's your training, it's your professional development, it's all those things that you have to do on a daily basis, the daily activities in order to take you where you want to go. That's gonna that's the route that's gonna get you to making that kind of money. And the schedule, the calendar is a thousand percent something that's so important that many, many, many young entrepreneurs disregard. And I did too. I was like, eh, I'm good. I can like I know I'm really good with times, I'm really good at remembering all stuff. You're not that good. 
no one's that good, you know, because because you 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 will end up wasting open time. And that's what it's not that you have a problem or I did have a problem with making my appointments because I would make my appointments. It's that when I had open time, I wasn't productive. And I'd find yes. myself scrolling on Instagram and I'd have a bunch of open white space and I would just not be in care. Like, ah, oh, well, I did this today and I did that and I got this coming up. I, I got an open period. No, use your calendar to really say, okay, where's all my white spaces? What can I do in order to get back on the path to get to the goal, the the destination where I want to go? I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to fill in, I have to do this today, I have to do that today, I have to do this. And you start filling that stuff into your white space. Now you just follow the you just follow the plan. You just follow the route. That's all you gotta do. Right. So and it leads to so much joy and lightness. Yeah. Because if you don't have a clear plan, you're right. The common saying, if you plan to fail. You, sorry, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. And so if you can really plan and do money-making activities. Mm. So list out what are the money-making activities? You got to see your client and you got a really good schedule. I highly recommend that you avoid to-do lists because if you have got any work activities that you need to do, you schedule in, you have got one place that you go to, which is clear you can tell and may i add that if you color code your calendar uh, if I do you color day. code your calendar let's say green is all clients and every week let's say you book out six weeks ahead and you can tell there's green then you're seeing clients you know those consistent habit of seeing clients are there and if it's 70 percent of your calendar and if it's not fill it up to 70 percent so that you can actually have better sales conversion that is how you're going to make it take along. And of course, you will achieve your financial goals when you got clear calendar that's color-coded and um, getting you the results that you're looking for. And I like also the other thing is when you have white space. So the reality is that when you book a calendar um, up, there will always be clients who sometimes doesn't show up. So if you actually educate your mindset around if client doesn't show up, I use that time for personal development, CBD points, maybe listen to you know, a training session for 15 minutes and integrate or enhance or upgrade my skill. You know what to do rather than our oh, client actually canceled the appointment. What do I do for this hour that I was you know, meant to see the client? Yeah. But if you know how to train your mindset around if the client doesn't show up, which will happen, right? So what are you going to do with that time? Because time is precious. It's one commodity that everyone has equal amount of. Whether you're the king of the world, you got 24 hours. You are someone in another role, you got 24 hours. That is a fair thing that everyone in the world, no more, no less, have got 24 hours. Mm. So if you maximize the use of your time powerfully, you're going to get so much more. And you can 10x, 20x, 50x your income easily so if you stay focused on one shift even if you tweak that today five percent you watch the transformation that will happen in your business and your life as well yep absolutely no i i love it i love it um i used to have when i was in the field and i would uh go from house to house client to client um and i was going into clients homes um i spent if i if i had a client that didn't show I already had a backup plan of houses that were in the area of clients that I had leads for, but I could not contact. And I was doing door, I planned scheduled door knocks for every stop. So I was like, Hey, this hour, if this doesn't show, I'm doing door knocks and I'm going to go try to see if I can either get into another home just by showing up or I'm going to go ahead and schedule an appointment. I'm going to show up like, Hey, I'm going to come back at this time and I'm going to get more client appointments for the future. So I mean, you try to still be productive during that time. And when you do that, you're right. You you're training your brain that it's okay. Like sometimes I kind of wanted to, for a client to not show so that I could door knock. Cause it may have been an area that I'm like, dude, there's a lot of doors I can knock in this area and set a lot of appointments in that one hour. So it's kind of like, I kind of want it to happen, you know? And I was fine with it. It just, it, it was, I allowed it to happen without it letting ruin my day or ruin yes. my mindset for any future appointments I had that day. Yes. And I call that intuition, right? Sometimes you walk into an appointment, the first 15 minutes, you know, this is not going to go anywhere. 
really, really wrap that appointment up in the most gracious and polite way and get the hell out of that and use the rest of the time yeah. for something more purposefully. So the art also is you need to really master the art of knowing, all right, is this going to go somewhere? If it's not, is there another way to get out of it and excuse yourself and use the rest of the time purposefully rather than sitting the whole session that you book for and leads to nowhere as well. So yeah. there's so much into the art of time management and productivity in that. And I think we can write a book around that. But those are the subtle tweaks that can really shift the way you work productively as well. Yeah. Mm. And that does, that, that does change your performance. And a lot of people, it's, it's, it's easy to mistake that it doesn't affect sales performance, but it absolutely does. You know, oh, yes. it, it is a, it is a key factor in sales performance as any sales professional in any sales industry, it will affect your sales performance. If you are not doing productive, if you're not controlling your calendar to have productive time and fill in those white spaces. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Um, some of the other things that you talked about, uh, were being kind and you know, just being, being kind, being of service to others. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you know who Rory Vaden is. Um, but he, yeah, Roy Vaden, I've heard famous, of him. Yep. Famous quote. It's hard to be nervous when your heart's on service. And I have always, I've that quote has stuck with me since I heard it when I first got into sales. And I've talked to my sales agents quite a bit about this because they're always like, they're always so nervous about getting on the phones or getting, having their first appointment. Like, what if I, and I'm like, you have to release attachment to the sale. The yes. sale, the, the, the sale is not about you. And it has, this has nothing to do with your expertise. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your sale. With you getting commission it has everything to do with the client. It has everything to do with the mm. client. The clients, what their problem is, what are you trying to solve for them? What what do they need? Right. And it's, yep. it's all about having conversation and learning about that person, and then providing the best service that puts them in the best position possible. Right. Is yes. that about you? And if you release that, if you release that attachment to the sale, because the only reason you're nervous is, is all selfishly focused. It's all, yes. like, I look stupid. What if I can't answer a question? What if I, 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 the, 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 no, the sales about them. It's not about you. Yep. And so you release that, put in a heart of service, really hard to be nervous at that point, but it's a, the same concept of like being kind, you know, be, a, be a nice person. And, um, in Australia, I don't know if you do this, but in Australia, we have to present our financial services guide, which has all the disclaimers and, you know, privacy and what you do and also the advice profile and also what products you can help the clients with, what products you can't because insurance is such a big, um, massive area. And so I always ask the team to ensure that you practice that, especially new ones that have just, you know, come on board, practice that document in front of you know your mates or role play that and understand the product rather than saying about the product features the first time with the client if you're new practice that with someone else and then make sure that it rolls out of your tongue naturally so that you don't feel nervous the reason why you feel nervous is because sometimes you can't remember everything and then you're like i'm trying to understand that product for myself but if you do the work behind the scenes, you prep yourself. And if you devote about an hour a day, you prepare yourself, you will be more confident walking in because it becomes more natural. And you enjoy the conversation so much more. And you give yourself room to really move around in that meeting. Mm. And your client will sense that because we are energetic beings. Mm. So as energetic beings, you want to be natural. You don't want to be robotic going in, you know what, this is the step that I've taught I'm doing. And then it becomes very, you know, limiting. But if you're listening, you're enjoying, you're observant, you're in that environment, you point things out that really engages the client, guess what? You're already winning them. And that first impression that we talk about, 7% that people are impressed by the first instant they look at you, that is how you can project yourself as a magnetic person, as a magnetic speaker, as a magnetic salesperson. Mm. So those are the things that you're in control of. Yes. And those are the things that you can walk away and practice behind the scenes. And once you're there, you're on show. You're ready to go. You're ready to serve the audience. You're ready to add value to them. And think about 
how I can add value. I like the point that you mentioned earlier. I am here to serve you. And you think about that constantly, majority of your thoughts, I am here to serve you. I am here to problem solve for you. I am here to leave you better than I've met you in the last hour. Guess what? The client feels that. They do. Not just your words, but it's your, your body language. It's your intentions, right? yeah. Your tone. You can't go, I'm here to serve you, but then your facial expression is not quite matching. Yeah. But if your facial expression, your whole body language is you want to be there, I want to see you through it, I really want to add value, I know that this will serve you. Guess what? The whole package coming through, it's easy. Yeah. It's fun. And you win the sale. You win the sale easily. 100%. So, yeah. A hundred percent. I love it. I love it. And uh, there's, there's not only just winning the sale, but you, you, you create a wow experience, right? When you do it, when you start to get really good at it, when you're really kind, you go above and beyond in the service, you go above and beyond in, in how you treat the customer and, and the, and how you take care of them and how you uniquely find so solutions to their problems that are, that really are custom fit for them you you do something that is imp so impressive to them that you start now you've you've created a, a a scalable mini book of business off of them because they're going to become raving fans for you they're going to want yeah. they're going to want to buy from you again they're going to want to do continued business they're going to want to tell their friends and brag about the experience you know you talked about setting setting a card do a handwritten card, do a handwritten card that is so specific that it can only be to them. Like they know mm. when you read it, that that was meant for them because it's unique to the conversation that you had when you sat with them. Right. You, yeah. couldn't just, you just couldn't, Hey, thanks for the business. Like that's not unique. Right. Um, yeah. but having a very thoughtful handwritten, nice signature, everything, man, that, that goes such a long, long way. And it's impressive because it takes time and they know it took time and, you, and it showed that you cared, right? Yes. And man, I you, like the, you can, go ahead. The go ahead. point that you just, you know, raise around handwritten cards and it just can be three sentence, five sentence, but the art is also, you can do a PS and go, have you listened to this podcast recently? The other day you mentioned about something and I thought about you. And P.S. this podcast that I've been listening to, episode 121, ideal, go and listen. You know, things that is just another added. It doesn't cost you more, yeah. but it requires that you have a resource list that you can refer to them. Or, you know, a latest book that you've read or yeah. a wonderful Netflix movie that is so in line with your values and the belief system. They go, have, have you watched that Netflix show? I think that documentary is amazing. You might want to enjoy. P.S. You know, those really unique things. And that's how you really stand out from the crowd. Yeah. That's how you really go, wow, this person is above and beyond. And it's so much more fun to work with someone like that. So, yeah, just wanted to, you know, add to that layer because, you know, we used to always think that, is there anything else? Because my team, 38 of them, everyone writes a card but how they can stand out in the card that they have written. So yeah, something to add on. I love it. I love it. So how, how would you, uh, to shift gears and talk about building, you know, we talked about just the sales as an individual, when you're going to build a sales team, a 1099 complete commission only sales team, how do you go about building it from scratch for a brand new person? That's like, Hey, I'm starting to sell. I want to build a team what would you give in terms of advice or coaching that that would help them to get that that ball rolling if you want to build a team you want to hire the right people and hire people that truly care about people so my mistakes a few of them in the past that i want to raise here is that sometimes you think that those people look good and they know it all but they are the hardest to actually lead because their ego is so strong. Yeah. Hire people who are passionate about people because insurance is a human-to-human -human business. 
And so people cannot see the tangible value, but people know that it's going to protect them. Mm -hmm. So you want to hire people that have got a heart. They really care about people. I've hired people who look good, amazing and all that, but they just want to be day transactional and they don't really care for the clients. And when it comes to, you know, filling up the person's statement, they're not listening. They want to do a shortcut and that impacted on a lot of areas down the line on the customer journey. Mm. But I want to really emphasize on the part that you hire them, you ask them questions in the interview. Do they really care? Give examples of how you care for people because the client will feel it. Any age group, we are human beings. We know when people care for us. And so hire that group of people, onboard them. Mm -hmm. Make sure you spend time onboarding with them, educate them, support them, listen to them, take their feedback. Every individual's way of selling is gonna be different. So there is no one size fits all. And the way they might sell the product the way they articulate that might be different. And so I invite them to use their personal stories because storytelling allow people to really resonate with the clients. So teach your client to talk about storytelling mm -hmm. and help them in terms of role-playing. A lot of people don't like role-playing, right? But the more you practice in a safe environment, when you walk out in the field, it gets to be easier. Yeah. And start with a group of five, really champion them, support them, celebrate every single milestone. Every Friday, make it an hour of just celebration. What can we celebrate? What have you done better this week? I want to champion your success. I want to see how well you've done it and share best practices. Because when you build a team, you want everyone to share best practices. Sorry. Focus on all that. Other things that you want to focus around is make sure all of them understand, you know, their unique value proposition, their superpowers when they go and see someone. Teach them around how to communicate as a speaker. Because a lot of people jump from knowing a product and selling product is very different. And so they will need support around how to speak, how to share, how to walk through that. And there will be a framework that you probably would have created to help them walk through that. Three to five points to help them have it, like a card that they can go away and practice that. Have it ready in the back pocket. Mm. So teach them all those things because once you build a team to know that, that's how they go warm up to a group of people, a group of you know state, suburb, or you know whoever they may be. And at the start of the week, always set reasonable target and help them to stretch the target mm. because it is exciting to stretch the target and to support those who have done well and to really support those who have not always done well, but listen to where their concerns are or areas of deficiencies they may have and help them close that gap. Because a lot of times we can look after the 20% of the team once the team is, you know, thriving and we focus on the 20 percenters and then the 60% and the 20%, the 20%, we hope that they will disappear with time and, you know, um, remove themselves from the team. But we also want to support those to help them upgrade 10%, 20% every single week from a sales perspective and educate them on a regular basis to really understand what else they can do differently because if you keep them sharp, you enhance their skill more, they become better, stronger, and over time, they will do and perform better. Also ensure that, you know, from a productivity perspective is to help them ensure that, you know, with salespeople, this is what I noticed, they can really work really hard because the energy and air excitement is all there, but also they are the ones that burn out quickly. And so it's really important to make sure that they've got self-care strategies to look after their mind, body, and spirit, because if they can do that consistently, they will sustain the long haul rather than work five years, burn out, and then hated the industry and all that. How can you move forward 
in a way that really can sustain the long term. Yeah. And, you know, with a sales team, you always have someone who is really strong in a particular element. Get them to teach, get them to contribute, give them space during the meeting to share 10, 20 minutes every single week. The more you create a collaborative, inclusive environment, the easier the theme will thrive. And so that is one way to really elevate the whole team to a whole nother level every single week. And make sure that you have fun. Sometimes we focus on the work so much that we don't have fun anymore because we are so intense. We are trying to measure the performance outcome so strongly that we fail the fun element and it becomes such a chore. So think about how can you do fun activities together? Get to know each other. Learn about each other's, you know, passion, sports, anything that you do outside of work that is fun and engaging and go out. I think what I used to do every single month, we have one day that we just go out and have fun and do a retreat. Every six months, we do a two-day retreat and, you know, recalibrate, set new targets again, understand, all right, what's changing in the industry because there's always new things, features, or, you know, in Australia, there's a lot of just product upgrades. So have time to learn, but those learning opportunities make it unique, engaging, and really, I suppose, inclusive because there are those who are a bit more shy. And so you need to help them and lift up the game for them as well. Um, you're giving so many nuggets. I love all of this. And, and so for those of you that are listening, the audience, go back and and and. and listen to this again and take notes because all of these are key. I was actually writing down a lot of the things that you were saying as you're saying, I was like, Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. One of the things that really was impactful that, uh, I never even thought about it, but I'm like, cause you said, D you know, do an hour of celebration, right? Like each week. And, and I was like, well, yeah, we celebrate, but you were like, no, ce celebrate everything, celebrate anything. What is, what's so, some, and like, even if somebody didn't sell, you know, they didn't have any good sales, but what is something they could celebrate? right? Take part in this. And it, and like taking part in that exercise makes them more part of the team, makes them more part of that community. Right. And, and, and that's what you're, what, what, what that's the, the hardest thing, especially with a remote sales team. Like I have a very remote sales team for all over the nation. A lot of our meetings are on zoom. So I'm like, how can I get the team all feeling like they're part of this since they're not in the office and participating. Yep. Right. But that's a great way. So thank you. That's, that's something that I'm that I'm going to implement, you know, with with my team is every once in a while, like, hey, guys, let's do an hour celebration. If it's sales, maybe it's it's something that you uh, you in terms of metrics this week, you set more appointments than you did last week. Maybe it's something in terms of like you had you held more appointments than you've ever held or maybe it's you know you learn something from a client or during a client appointment that you never knew, but something that we can celebrate that I can tie back to activity or ag income producing activities that will continue to let you be like, okay, these activities are helping. I am getting better, you know, reinforcing that idea of managing the activities, the end, the, the sale will come, but just manage yep. activity. And other things that I used to do in terms of celebration as well is also recognition, right? For those who've got, for us, every single week, we collect our customer testimonials. Mm -hmm. But we also want to share a few so that it is going to lift up the spirit of the team. Recognition, you know, whether it's newborn in, you know, someone's family or, you know, they have worn something that is not work related, but they've been acknowledged. You know, they, they might be a marathon runner and they won number three in, you know, that competition. Things like that to help them feel so inclusive. And sometimes you might want to make it fun and go, you know what, this six weeks, you know, I know these six weeks, there's a huge shift in terms of pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I monitor every six weeks to see the block of, a habit and how they implement certain things. And that could be something that, you know, we celebrate as well. Ask them to also recognize their peers because a lot of times 
they will not um, sometimes want to, you know, because everyone's in competition. Everyone wants to be number one in the yeah. leaderboard. So I always say, you know what? If we can celebrate each other, we win together. Isn't yeah. it better to win together? And so I also used to have a remote team. Like, you know, in Australia, I look after about 60 branches, um, bank branches, and they're, they're like across all the regions. And so I don't really have my team together. And so when we have them together, we always want to have a meal and we always want to celebrate each other's birthday. I know the boys doesn't like it. They're like, oh, birthdays. But I know that inside their heart, they love that. Yeah. So, you know, things like that. Or anniversary, how, how long they have been in the team. So yeah. all those acknowledgements are making a huge difference in terms of celebration. I, I love it. I love everything that you're going over. And this, these are great tactics, you know, as just as a, I, and when you look at it, it, I think what you're saying that is a really good way to say, to, to look at this is when you're building a sales team or you're trying to become a good sales professional is that you're just being a good person. Mm. You're just being a, like an exceptional human being. And you yeah. just happen to be doing sales or building a sales team, but you're just being thoughtful. You're being considerate and you're being just an exceptional human being. And, and then those skills of sales will kind of come as you do the work. Right. Um, yeah. and, and that's, and that's, that's an important key. Um, Justin, we could sit here and talk sales all day long and you have a lot of stuff that we could talk about between your speaking, your books, uh, your podcast, um, where, if somebody is like, listen to this, they're like, man, I want to learn more about Jocelyn. I want to connect with her and I want to see your podcast. What's the best place to connect with you on? Find me on LinkedIn. Okay. So that's where I'm present or Instagram and come to my website. There are a number of resource, resources that you can tap into. So I talk about, you know, affirmations and I've got 111 success affirmations. You might want to read them. You might want to listen to the audio version. If you subscribe to that, grab that and think about it. Think about all the success that's inevitable for you to listen to and have that in your spirit and play in your mind, in your body when you drive to the next, you know, um, client meeting or, you know, when you are walking into a sales team meeting on a Monday morning, whichever way. The next thing is I have got a chapter around how you redefine success, which you can download free. It's one of the books that I've written. So download that chapter and think about how you can redefine success for yourself. Because the more you stretch yourself around how you redefine success, the better you become like a you know, rubber band, right? You're going to really stretch yourself better and better. Now, sales is also something that you want to also get a little bit uncomfortable so that you can be better as well. And I can go to another topic another day. But find me on my website, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. The last question I have is a question I ask every single person, all of my guests when they come on. You have the option or you have the, the opportunity to sit with, break bread with, learn, just uh, have an experience individually with three different people, anyone in history, anyone. Who would those three people be? I would love to spend time with Thomas Edison. Dude, that's a good he one. I've heard that one. I actually heard, I actually heard uh, Nikolai Tesla today. Oh, yes. So that's, that's, that's a close <laughs> one. But Tess, okay. Okay, Thomas Edison. And I also want to spend time with Louise Kay because she's someone that wrote a, a spiritual book and um, she didn't start a business until late 60s. Oh, okay. And um, passed away. She had used a lot of natural modes to heal a lot of diseases that she had. And the last person I would love to get to know better is my grandfather. Oh. Okay. He started our family business about 50 years ago. But I spent the first three years of my life with him. But at the time, you know, I didn't really quite get to know a lot of his background, his history and all that. But he taught me a lot about money. He taught me how to count. He taught me how to use coins to buy sweets. And I would love to spend more time with him because, you know, he's such an intelligent person. He did uni in his time and then he left his time to 
So this vision of a family business now. And so I want to yeah, get to know these three people. That is awesome. Those are three great choices. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And thank you so much for taking the time and come on board and sharing your story and, and a lot of your experiences and your knowledge with the audience. I'm sure that everyone here was able to learn something. Definitely go back and listen to it. And if you got any value from this, if you learned anything, if you grew, if it changed your perspective, then do me a favor, share this content. This is a value-based exchange where we can grow organically by word of mouth, by you sharing this value and hopefully providing that value to another person that can also learn and grow from it as well. It takes you probably 60 seconds to rate, review, subscribe, and share this content, but it means the world to us. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. This has been the Be The Difference podcast. I'm your host, Greg Birch. Until next time, as always, deuces. We'll see you.